All right, ladies, I'm super excited. So um, we are headed to our holiday dinner and spending some time with family today. But I wanted to give you guys the tips on this mac and cheese. Super simple, seven steps, and you can have it too. All right, follow along. <laughs> After boiling the noodles, you're going to put them into a pan. Fill this up as much as you can. You, must, you want to make sure that you drain your noodles out. Before you put them in a pan. You can see that the noodles are cooked. They are prepared. They're not super mushy. You don't want them to break down. You can tell just by they still have some fluffiness to it, but it's not overly cooked. That's going to be important because you're going to bake this macaroni and cheese all over. Okay, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the heat from the noodles to melt um, the butter into it. This is going to take roughly maybe a couple minutes to make sure that this is done, but you want it, that's why you want your noodles to be hot. So I usually just kind of turn it around and sort of cover it. But you also want to make sure that that butter is dispersed throughout all of the noodles because that's what's going to help create the creaminess that you're looking for and also that nice, rich um, taste that you, you're going to want. Now, this is definitely not a low carb diet, low fat diet. This is a very rich dish, but it's so yummy. And it's something that you wouldn't, of course, eat every day, but definitely a must have for the holidays. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a bit. And then we are going to let that melt. All right, so the next step after you completed all of your butter, making sure that it's melted completely, you've mixed it around within your noodles, you're gonna add some seasoning. And I like to just top it off with some black pepper where it's visible. So you'll see there that it's all across the entire, you can see there's just a little piece of butter and you don't want that butter to stay there. So we're going to mix this in. You don't want it to be in one spot, in like a little pocket, because it'll melt in that pocket. And then you'll have butter mac and cheese, or butter, butter and cheese. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, I'm doing two half sheets because it's just easier to carry, especially when you're traveling with the food. Um, but this is basic, think of this ingredient as the host. And this is what I'm using. It's just a fine ground black pepper. Okay, then you wanna do the same thing with the Lari's seasoning salt. And you're gonna to just top it off. Remember, you're gonna get salt from the butter. You're getting salt from the cheese. So you don't need a ton of this, but you do need enough to give it a little bit of punch. It gives it a punch and it's a nice seasoning flavor. I use seasoning salt, Lari seasoning salt, instead of like, um, a normal salt, like our Himalayan salt. Himalayan salt sometimes is more salty than it actually is flavorful for a dish like this. So normally throughout my weekly preparation and cooking, I'll use the Himalay the pink Himalayan salt. But for this, it calls for a nice, different type of seasoning. Um, Lori seasoning. So you can see how now you should see sprinkles of that pepper. You also see the sprinkles and that's going to calm down. I know initially you're looking going, wow, that's a lot of pepper there. Once we add the eggs and the milk and the um, 
the cheese, it'll really soak it up and it'll have a good flavor profile and it'll balance very well. So that is the mixing of that. All right, I usually add mostly everything that I can add before I add the milk because I'm doing a little bit of tasting and making sure that, or before I add the eggs, excuse me, before I, um, uh, before I add the eggs, because we know why you can't really have the eggs because you can get sick from it. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up this. All right, so here's the carnation milk that I'm going to add. It's not sweetened milk because some people will try to go and get the condensed um, sweetened milk. This is an evaporated milk. I'll add that. This actually does make a difference um, where you don't have to um, use the regular milk. I mean, if that's all you have, it's all you have, but this really does make a difference in your macaroni. So I'm going to go ahead and mix them. You can see when, once I added that, how you can see the milk kind of running through it. You want to see that milk that milk is what's going to really give it the creaminess and create sort of the roux that you want for your macaroni and cheese. And you can see also the seasoning salt and pepper kind of running through that as well and really creating a nice um, roux and flavor profile. I'm gonna do the same thing here for the second dish that I have here. I'm looking at this and I'm going, hey, I might have a little more pepper than I want, but I do this, I second guess myself every time and it's always a hit. And people are like, oh my God, your macaroni and cheese is amazing. So I'm hoping this works out for you. I decided to do this video because a lot of people have asked me what's the recipe every year that I make it for the holidays. And they send me a picture and they send they have this problem or, you know, as you can see, as I'm creating it, it's not super difficult at all. You usually use about one and a half of uh, milk for a tray or one and three fourths. So you want it nice and creamy. Okay, so there that is. And that'll also make sure that it soaks up the butter, the cheese, all that seasoning that you put in there. But look how creamy that is. Okay, now what I do at this point is I take a nice uh, taste test. I'll take one of the noodles here. You can see, I'll take one of those noodles. Nice. Not overly buttery, not overly peppery. Needs a little bit more salt for this one. So I'm gonna take one of these here. See that one has a little bit more salt than the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more seasoning salt. And this is all to your tasting, so Whatever you decide, whatever you consider too salty, not too salty, or not enough, or too much, then, you know, and then also consider when you're tasting it that you're gonna add some cheese in there. That's also gonna let off some salt as well. So you just wanna consider that. Sorry for my sniffle. I think the pepper got the best of me here. Okay. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this one. All right, so that is gonna be for that. Now, you wanna use about three to four eggs to put inside of your large dish or two eggs a piece. I'm using two eggs. That's gonna help kind of bring things together, especially as you have the butter and you have the milk. That's really gonna create a bond um, because it is a macaroni and cheese that is baked. So you wanna make sure that you do that. You can see this. So I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. So here's where I'm gonna now add my eggs to the mix. 
That's gonna be one egg. Okay. And then we're gonna add the second egg. Normally you don't want your hands all in it, but I'm trying to show you guys. And you don't want this extra piece of whatever this is here. Okay. So then you just mix it in. You have to mix this first. What you don't want is this to turn into like kernel or curled. So you mix that first and then you dump it in. So let's do a repeat and do the next one here. I have two more eggs, two more eggs for the other. Take our spoon and we're just gonna go down. We have to mix this around. This has to move around throughout all the noodles because you don't want it to create, you know, kind of an egg souffle or something in your macaroni and cheese. But you can see how the creaminess is coming out of this now. All right, I'm back, you guys. I had to stop for a moment. But here is now, look how creamy this looks. And look how awesome. Looks so good. Let me do the other one before. I already have my stove, it's already um, gone through preheat and it's up to 400, so you're gonna have it on 400. This will take about 20 minutes to bake um, after you're done. Anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes, it depends on your oven, but you put it on 400. Because remember, all of the components for the most part are already cooked. The only thing that we're trying to do is crisp it up a little bit, kind of bond it all together, and we want to make sure that that egg is uh, thoroughly cooked, um, you know, within that uh, dish. You're probably wondering, uh, like, how many noodles did I use? I use a large elbow noodles. So that's these right here. You can find these in different brands, but large elbows is what you're going to be looking for. I use a pack and about a little bit over a pack because um, I wanted a little bit fuller pan, but normally I just use one pack, but I wanted a fuller pan, so I use a little bit more. And then this is the cheese that I use. I just buy this from Costco. This is the sharp ch cheddar cheese, and I shred my cheese. It's so important to make sure that you're using shredded cheese that you shred on your own. So here is my cheese that I shredded. I have an adapter for my KitchenAid, and it just does this in like minutes. My husband is usually the the chef that does that, but do not purchase the package shredding system. <laughs> I know it's easier when you're making tacos and all of that, but when you're baking, it does not break down well and that cheese just does not melt well. So what we're gonna do is take a handful, we're gonna put it in both sides. And you can do one at a time if you like. I just kind of put them together because that way I can sort of even it out and make sure both of them are getting similar or the almost similar, same amount of cheese. And then you now you just want to move it all in because this um, and just kind of shake it in. Those large elbow noodles, the reason why you choose those is because it allows the cheese to ooze through the actual noodle versus it being too small and those noodles, that cheese doesn't go through the noodle. You don't want a dry noodle. It's supposed to be mac and cheese, everyone. Mac and cheese. Okay. So let's finish this up. The reason why it's so important is to make sure that you don't get your noodles too mushy. You see how much moving and, and flipping around? You don't want those noodles to break down while you're doing all of that. Plus you don't want a mushy macaroni either. surface here now notice here what I have I have this left over I'm gonna use this to top everything off that's what's left over so this is gonna have to do 
And that's why that roux is so important because it really does take that cheese and mix it all in together and really creates a nice bond and gooeyness that we're looking for when we have cheese. Now, some people will say I use five different cheeses or three different cheeses or all those kind of things. And I really don't think it's needed. I mean, I think a simple cheese, I take this to every potluck at work. I make this for my in-laws who never had macaroni and cheese like this. And they, it's a request every year. Every year for potluck, every year for the holidays, every year for everything, this is a request. And it really does not take so much. Now you might like, a di like different flavors and you want different cheeses. You can do that if you want to. I don't. I have found this to be a very simple, straightforward recipe that people love. In fact, at work this week, people were like, who made the macaroni and cheese? And they were like, Renia made it. And they were like, oh, I love it. And then, you know, for the holidays, when Thanksgiving comes around, this, this past holiday or this past celebration, because today is actually Thanksgiving that I'm doing this today. But... <clears throat> At my job, they did a, a thing where it's like, okay, what are you thankful for? And like at least three people out of 20 people said, I am thankful for Rania's macaroni and cheese. So what does that tell us? That tells us a ton. Like it doesn't take complication to make a nice, rich macaroni and cheese that tastes really good, that definitely hits the palate of many. This is just something that you will find is so yummy in anyone's kitchen and it was passed down from generation to generation and i'm so thankful that i took the time to learn this from my mom so there are your pies or your macaroni and cheese and that's it y'all so we're gonna put this in the oven for about 20 25 minutes and I'll show you all what that looks like when we're done. Okay? Thanks, everyone.